This is chapter 12.7, Simple Linear Regression. And this is a problem similar to what you're likely to have on your exam with multiple parts, and each part will be worth a certain number of points. So I wanted to give you an example that you could follow to see uh, how you need to address those questions and how you need to find the information on the regression printout. This is problem 54, chapter 12, page 445. And you can see the problem there. Basically, we've got a sample from 24 countries. And what we want to know about is the relationship between global social media networking, the percentage of the population that's involved in that. And that's my Y variable. And my X variable is GDP per capita. Number of questions that we're going to address relative to that. You can see what those questions are right there. There's a lot of them. And then at the end of all that, we'll summarize what we think about the quality of the model. So the first thing to do is to find the equation itself. How do I find the equation? I look on the regression printout and I discover the intercept coefficient and the independent variable GDP per capita coefficient. These are the two numbers and all I do is put them in the form of the equation of a line. B0 is 22.0689. B1 is 0.0021 x1 and you could say plus e there if you wanted to for the error term but it's not necessary okay so there's our equation that's part a just take the numbers off the printout put them in the form of the regression equation interpret the meaning of the slopes b1 and b0 in the equation so the slope b1 is this value 0.0021 and what it indicates is that the predicted mean social media usage in percentage is expected to increase by 0.0021 for each $1 increase in GDP per capita. So it's always a one unit increase in the X variable and Y increases by whatever the number is there. The Y intercept B0 says if GDP per capita equals zero, then you would expect Y, social media usage, to be 22.0689 percent, okay? So that's the way we explain those. Part C, predict the average percent of social media usage of GDP per capita is $10,000. So uh, we plug into the equation the $10,000 into the general equation that we've found the values for B0, B1, and that gives me 42.5689 is my predicted value of Y as the percent of social media usage when the average GDP is 10,000. That figure is expected to be 42.57%. Part D, is there anything useful in the equation? Here we want to examine the F value, and that's found on the ANOVA portion of the printout. Here's the value, 39.37. And the critical value which we can find in our table, and here's the table down here, is based on 1 and 22 degrees of freedom. 1 and 22. Now remember the denominator has to be the 22, and the regression degrees of freedom would be the numerator. 1 and 22 gives me 4.30, and notice my upper tail area is 0 0.05. So if that's what I'm looking for, it says reject the null. There is something useful in the equation, the x variable, is related to the y variable, x being uh, GDP per capita, y being mobile social media usage in percentage. Part E, what is the coefficient of determination? And then use the adjusted value and interpret its meaning. So the coefficient r squared is the ratio of the regression sum of squares, SSR, to the total sum of squares, SST. So we just take those two values off the printout and there's the value, 0.6415, and we can go back to that slide to see where it comes from, right here, 0.6415, and we're going to use the adjusted value, which adjusts for the sample size and the number of variables in the equation. So it's a little bit more accurate than the R squared. It's always a little bit less, or maybe virtually the same. 0.6252 is the value we want to work with then. And so that value is right here. According to the printout, the adjusted R squared, 0.6252, means 62.52% of the variation in social media usage is explained by variability in GDP per capita. 
which is almost two-thirds of the variation, so that's pretty good, having only one variable in the equation. Provide the correlation coefficient, that's r, the square root of the coefficient of determination. Does it indicate a significant relationship? The way we decide this is we look at the um, quick rule. 2 over the square root of n is the quick rule. And it basically corresponds to an alpha level of 0.05, and it says that two standard deviations divided by the square root of the sample size is about how large we would expect r to be if there is a significant relationship. So if the absolute value of r is greater than or equal to 2 over the square root of n, that says there is a significant relationship. So looking over here, r would be multiple r, 0 0.08009, that's the absolute value of that, is greater than or equal to 2 over 24, because I have 24 observations, gives me 0 0.8009 is greater than 0 0.4083, therefore there is a significant relationship between these two variables. Should the regression model be used to predict social media usage or not? How do you know? This is how I decide. I compare the standard deviation of y, and to find this, what I need to do is to run descriptive statistics. It will give me the standard deviation of y, as long as I have the social media usage percentage, which is y, as my variable. 15.8279 is that standard deviation, and the standard error is going to be found down here under my regression statistics, 9.69. So, because the standard error is less than the standard deviation of y, that says, or you could say the standard deviation is greater than the standard error, the regression model should be used. There'll be less error by using the model than simply using the mean value of y as my prediction. Next, we want to examine the residuals to see whether they're normally distributed. So what I do here is I compare to the empirical rule, which applies to normal distributions. The null hypothesis, notice, is the residuals are normally distributed. The alternative is they're not normally distributed. So I take the 1, 2, and 3 standard deviations and add and subtract from mu. These are the expected percentages based on the empirical rule. This is what I actually found in my sample data. How many observations out of 24 were within plus or minus one standard deviation? And the answer is 13 out of 24, which is 54.2%. It's a little less than 68. We keep going, 23 over 24 would be within plus or minus two standard deviations, 95.8%, which is very close to my expected value here. And then all 24 of them are within three standard deviations, plus or minus, and therefore 100% is in that group. There are no outliers, therefore it does appear that we have a normally distributed residuals, which is what we want because we can do a better job of predicting why if the residuals are normally distributed. If we had an outlier here, one value even that was more than three standard deviations or less than negative three, that would say it's probably not normally distributed. We're more concerned about this three standard deviations and two standard deviations than we are the one over here. We kind of like a little more in that group, but nonetheless, these others look okay. That's why we're saying the residuals look to be normally distributed. 0.05 level of significance determine whether the explanatory variable GDP per capita that's our x variable, makes a significant contribution to the equation by using the t-statistic. So we look back at our printout to find our t-value, and on this printout, it's over here, just a little bit further over here, it gives you the t-statistic. And the t-statistic in this case is 6.2744. We compare that with our critical value rule, which is 2.0, that stands for two standard deviations. It's about 6.3 standard deviations instead of two, so it's quite a bit larger than two, and therefore uh, we can say that GDP does make a significant contribution to the regression equation. It's worth using in terms of predicting why. And finally, we want to look at the 95% confidence interval estimate for the true slope. What do we think the slope really is if we had to predict it using a confidence interval? 
So we've got upper and lower 95% here. We've got GDP per capita, and this is the lower limit. This is the upper limit. Both are pretty close to zero, but notice both are positive. That's the key thing. As we write them out, it would say, here's our hypothesis, B1 equals zero, B1 does not equal zero is the alternative. And we have two values which are both positive for B1. Therefore, we're 95% confident that the slope, real slope for the population does not equal zero. Finally, we want to summarize our findings regarding the quality of the model. So from part D, so we're just going back to earlier slides, finding this information and writing it up, so you don't have to go back further than this. We use the F value, 39.37, and we compare it to the critical value, 4.30, and what we found was, if you remember, that since this is so much greater, there is something significant in the model. It does appear that X and Y are probably related. Coefficient of determination from part E showed us that R squared was 92.52, which means, excuse me, 62.52, which means 62.5% of the variation in social media usage percentage is explained by GDP per capita. From part F, we found that the correlation coefficient was 0 0.8009, which is greater than 2 over the square root of 24, meaning that B1, true population slope, is not equal to zero. From part G, we found that SY, which was 15.83, was greater than SYX, standard error, and therefore that says, since the standard deviation is greater than the standard error, we should use the model. Part H, residuals are normally distributed, is what we discovered, there were no outliers. Part E, we got for T, we found 6.2744, which is quite a bit greater than 2. Therefore, GDP per capita does make a significant contribution to the regression equation. My final conclusion is use the equation to predict social media usage because I can do a better job with the equation than without. I'm explaining almost two-thirds of the variation. I've got a highly significant relationship between the dependent and independent variables, and therefore it is a useful model. That's the end of this section.